Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of Diary of a Double. This is the year-long journey of Antonio Aguelas in his attempt to swim 67 kilometers from England to France and then back from France to England. Welcome, Antonio. Muy buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches. En donde lugar de estar en el mundo, it is Wosa Saturday. It's not Wosa Live, it's Wosa yeah. Saturday. And um, since I already did my introduction, I will take my classes off. Yeah. That was just for the introduction. Yeah. I was I was thinking about of a Saturday Night Live when Belushi used to wear his cone heads and his uh, dark glasses. So uh, I'm here in Acapulco, Stephen, uh, yeah. enjoying enjoying uh, about 30 degrees Celsius. Um, so uh, I hope uh, my rest of my our friends in the rest of the world um, have a, a nice weather. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So today you were in uh, Acapulco. The water was calm. Water was almost 30 degrees. So that's, that's uh, like 87 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And how was it? Very disappointing in terms of, of ocean. Um, you know, I, I came here after a week. You know what happened to me this week, Stephen? Um, I found the pool in Mexico City, as I told everybody uh, last week, which is this week it was 15.2 degrees, the coldest. Um, and uh, so we swam there. And, um, you know, uh, Rafa always, Rafa is with us today. And I always tell Rafa, Rafa, you know, why don't you try the workouts you put me? Why don't you go and, and try to do them? So Rafa has been going around the bushes about getting into the water and seeing how it feels at 15.2 in the swimming pool. And um, it was very sad. But during the week, he was so cold outside the, 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 the pool that I had to bring my, one of my jackets for him to wear because he was getting cold just walking in, uh, on the deck. And um, so um, today I, I came here. Yesterday, he made me do repetitions. OK, and uh, so like part legs and, um, you know, first a 1500 and an 800 and a 400 and a 200. So my shoulders were gone. So he did, he made me do the same thing today. It was just for two hours, you know, different changes. So I, I came home, I sent my workout and I said, Rafa, you know, I'm, my shoulders are really hurting. And he said, what, does it matter? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm tired. What are you gonna do tomorrow? I said, no, tomorrow it's a, it's a rest day. I'm gonna walk. So don't, don't complain, just, you know, that's what you have to do. So he just, you know, stars. I mean, he came back from Uruguay you know, you know, very, very uh, enthusiastic about what I have to do. Got it. Got it. Now, so, so you went from 15 degrees in the pool to 30 degrees in the ocean. What did you have to make some kind of adjustment mentally or physically? Yeah. The, per, the first one is, you know, it's very not, you know, Susan is here and, and, and Queen knows that as well. When you go into, into the aquatic park, you start going into the water and it's at 15 degrees is so bad. I mean, it's just, you know, you just go and, and try to do it slow and then you jump. And so today was so nice just getting in. It's like going to jacuzzi, my, no, nothing was hurting. But you know what? I, sat, I started drinking water at 20 minutes. I was, you know, totally dehydrated. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing how, you know, uh, I guess, you know, now I'm feeling it in my, in my body. Those changes in, in temperatures, it really, it really uh, got me dehydrated. I mean, I, I drank about one and a half uh, liters of uh, water, and uh, but I feel that that's what's the biggest thing that I that I felt that uh, that uh, it's uh, my body needed more more liquid. When you drink more uh, water in a, in the warm water conditions, do you have to urinate more? No, no. You know, it's a good, it's a good point that you may you're making. I didn't urinate in the whole. So I I, I try to be. You know, I, I tried to maintain the ocean, and I didn't urinate today. Those are, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I didn't pollute it today. No, I did not. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good point. I, I, I hadn't realized that I didn't. I, it was just that's a sign that I wasn't consuming enough water. Yeah, what I know, what uh, we always recommend the Olympic uh, marathon swimmers to do, especially when they're in a warm water uh, place, like. Uh, Beijing or Rio de Janeiro is they make sure that their urine is clear before they start the race. If they're, oh, I see you're, you have some good uh, <laughs> hydration. 
Yeah, well, I, 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 I was, I, I, you know, just talking about the dehydration. I had to. I was starting to think, and I had my beer here, so uh, you know, I, I'm okay. Susan, I mean, you don't have one, Susan. It's uh, it's already eleven o'clock in San Francisco. I mean, it's a drinking time. Yeah, a little so, early so, over here. <laughs> Go ahead, Susan. I was just going to say a little early, but yeah, you got to watch that dehydration. Um, I think when we were swimming in, uh, uh, one of the few times I've gotten in trouble has been we were at a USA uh, national team training camp in Canada, and I actually got pulled from the water and stuck in a car, air conditioned car, because I got overheated, didn't drink. Uh, it was pretty frightening. So yeah, got to hydrate up. And I like Steve idea, Steve's idea of make sure you hydrate beforehand with, with, uh, with something. Yeah. Well, yeah. I will. I will take care of that on 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 uh, on Wednesday, and I'll report next Saturday. Next Saturday. Yeah. So, Antonio, can you describe Acapulco Bay um, for for people who don't understand, don't know exactly? It's on the west coast of Mexico, so on the Pacific Ocean side, and uh, many Americans knew it because uh, there were a lot of famous celebrities and other people, including Johnny Weissmuller, who used to go down there and swim and but in mexico it's been a a long long time uh, resort can you describe the bay and the the atmosphere yeah you know this morning i, I have a I have my garmin screen so i can show you the the the, the bay where i was swimming but i, I was um, i was remembering um how i became a, a person of the ocean my grandfather was a fisherman and um, he had a boat here in Acapulco. And every single month, we used to come for one weekend. And yesterday, when we were driving from Mexico City, and I was telling Lucia how that weekend um, looked like, she said, well, that's the reason why you are hyperactive. My grandfather would pick me up at 1 o'clock on Friday. We would drive five hours to Acapulco, get to the, to the house in Acapulco, have dinner, wake up the next morning at 3.30, start fishing at four o'clock in the morning, would come back at three o'clock in the afternoon, would have dinner at the same restaurant, the same menu, the same thing, go to bed, wake up five o'clock in the morning the next day, drive back to Mexico City and be for lunch on Sunday with the family. So that's, uh, that's you know, that I did that for about 12 years. Um, and, uh, that, um, and that, so for me, Acapulco is this, um, it has two bays. Now it's like three different Acapulcos. The old Acapulco is what um, in the 50s was very famous. It was this big bay, the Bay of Acapulco. And you had on top of, uh, if you look at, that, at the bay, the bay's in front of you, over here at the left, they had this beautiful place called Las Brisas, which is a, a resort that looked from the mountains over to the, to the, to the bay. And um, that was the Acapulco, the old Acapulco, for many, many years. Then you had another um, bay, and if you let me, if you let me share my screen, um, this is where I swam um, this morning. Where I swam this morning. This is called the the, the Bay of Puerto Marquez. So if you're if you're in Acapulco, the old Acapulco, the next bay to the left, it will be to the south, is Puerto Marquez. And, um, and it's a very nice bay, it's, a, it's sheltered. And so this is what I did today, um, two hours and something minutes. Um, and uh, it, the water was very calm, very, very calm. Um, you know, on, 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 on Wednesday when Rafa is here, if you go over to the left, you have open ocean. So he will take me there because the currents there are very, very hard. And then, the new Acapulco is going to the left. It's called Acapulco, uh, Playa, de, Playa Diamante, or Acapulco Diamante. And that was started about 20 or 25, 20, about 20 years ago. And that's what the new Acapulco is. So it's, um, Acapulco has different tastes. Uh, you have, uh, and, 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 and it's, it's a melting pot. I mean, when you have the holidays, you see people from, from all, Different, um, uh, you know, areas of of life, and and uh, and and uh, you have people that can be from uh, 
you know, in, in the different in different areas, you have different kinds of people. It's very um, heterogeneous, uh, but it's uh, it's a place for people who live in Mexico City and the surrounding areas. is the most popular um, uh, touristic place where you can go to the ocean. Yeah. Um, it uh, were you escorted? Did, was there somebody beside you in a kayak or a paddleboard or a boat? No, yes, I had a, I had a kayaker. Um, he, was new, he was a new kayaker for me. And I was telling Rafa that I was very happy because uh, he was, um, I didn't know he, he was only 18, 19 years old. Uh, Rafa told me that this morning at 5.30 in the morning when we were just going over the workout. And, uh, it was it was his first time he was kayaking, and we only had a problem at the first thirty minutes because he, you know, Dan Simonelli is in in uh, in the call, and I I want to um, say something about Dan uh, in a moment, but uh, um, you know Dan is, is is the perfect kayaker. I mean he is always on your on your on your on on time on your right side, and uh, Mario who was kayaking today he was in front of me. He you know, he, you know, he couldn't keep. The slow pace of the swimmer, so he will go in front. So I have to tell him that he had to be on my on my my breathing side exactly where I bred where I was breathing, and uh, he understood that very well. And um, he miscalculated the route, so I had I swam almost 20 minutes more than I that I that I had to swim, but I put that in my I, I won't charge Rafa for for those 20 minutes, but that uh, that uh, that's what happened. Yeah, I, you know, Stephen, you know, as as we have talked here many times. I tried to be safe, and even if there was no waves, and even if there was uh, there's no traffic because uh, we're in confinement in Mexico, you never know. You know, an accident can happen anytime. So I always try to be escorted. So, and then um, about how far did you swim? Not I how long, six, how many hours, but what was your distance, more or less? Six point five kilometers. Okay. Okay, and are you going to Based. swim again uh, this weekend? There? Uh, no, I'm start. I'm just going to swim. Tomorrow is my off day. Tomorrow I'm going to walk. I'm going to go walking. Okay. On Sundays I walk, but on Monday I'm going to go one and a half hours. Monday and Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, Rafa is coming, and we're going to do four hours. Got it. Got it. So, so uh, Antonio, this is the twenty second week of your training. Yes. Um, how do you think it's going? On schedule, uh, a little bit better than you thought. Not as not as uh, good as you thought. You know, this week, this last week, we swam in cold water, all the days, when, with the exception of one. So we went on Monday. We went to, uh, to Cuernavaca, and um, you 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 were a coach, uh, Stephen, and you like to punish. I'm sure you punish your 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 swimmers. So Rafa, as I said, came very um, with a lot of ideas from Uruguay. So Monday he wanted to 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 test me. So he was, you know, he always puts me this this times to see. If, well, if, let's see if you can do it. So I had to do a 400, and um, and I thought I was going to go 610. But that day, my friend, the Olympian Ricardo Vargas, was there, and I said, "Would you pace me?" So he paced me and I went down 55. So Rafa could not say I was not in, 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 good, uh, in, good, uh, in good condition. And I, yesterday I told him I was after we finished because the week was tough. After we finished yesterday, I said that I felt much, much stronger than I have, have felt in, in a long, long time. Um, luckily I haven't had any injury. Uh, our strength workout is going very well. I'm being acclimatized to the to the cold water. I feel well in the cold water, but um, but we're starting the heavy the heavy duty workouts. Between now and May, it's going to be long days and uh, long swims on the weekends. So um, I'm happy where I am right now. I, I would say that I'm, uh, you know, with all the even with the pandemic and the things that have happened, I've been able to swim every single time that I had to swim. I haven't missed, well, I missed a workout, half a workout the other day. You know, now we go to the University of the Mexican police. So somebody around there said that the pool cannot be used and I have the permit from the chief of police of Mexico City. But somebody, you know, there's always in the military, somebody says, no, the pool has to be, evac to be evacuated. 
So I was evacuated from the pool. The, 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 you know, one of the, one of the sergeants came and said he has to go out. So uh, I was thrown out of the pool. Well, Rafa and I were thrown out of the pool. Um, but that that was good because you know we we, we made a, a small complaint and now nobody nobody bothers us at the pool. The pool is for us. So um, no, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I'm very confident. Um, it's nice when you feel that you're on the right way. Yeah. And your uh, double crossing of the English Channel will be in July. What do you know what your longest swim will be? Yeah, we're going to be swimming 24 hours. Really? In, yeah. a training, in one training? No, no, different segments. Oh, OK. Yeah, we, we do we do 24 hours. We're going we're gonna to do about 40 kilometers Okay. Uh, in 24 hours. Okay. In May, we're going to go in and out. Um, Rafa, you want to say something about that, Rafa? Or you want to do it in Spanish and I can translate it? ¿Quieres decir algo, Rafa, de nuestro entrenamiento más largo? Yeah, let, let's do that. Rafa. Yeah, he's on now. Rafa. Hola, hola. Oye, hola, Rafa, hola. Rafa, me está preguntando Steven. Que, ¿Quieres responder en inglés o quieres que lo diga? Rafa, me está, me está preguntando Steven que cómo, cuál va a ser nuestro entrenamiento más largo, de cuántas horas, cómo va a ser el más largo. Bueno, hola, ¿me escuchas? Sí. ¿Sí? Bien, no. <risa> este, son, es un entrenamiento fraccionado de cuatro horas por cuatro horas de descanso. Esto quiere decir que hay aproximadamente cinco entrenamientos de, eh, perdón, cuatro entrenamientos de cuatro horas completando 16 horas en el agua por unas ocho horas de, de descanso. Y eso aproximadamente, eh, la idea es llegar a los 40 kilómetros. Este, es un entrenamiento que ya probamos hacia el doble de Catalina y que gonna, resultó muy efectivo. We're going to be doing four hours swim, four hours rest, four hours swim, four hours rest, uh, five times. And, um, Wow, and and, um, and that, uh, that 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 we did that for Catalina, and um, that was a uh, you know we, we had never done it. And so Rafa Rafa tells me I want to try this, and I said, well, I one of the greatest long distance coaches here in Mexico uh, was uh, um, Tadeo Skepka. He was a Polish long distance coach. And he he coached the Mex the, the best Mexican marathons uh, runners, uh, some of them world records, Artur Robarios, and many of the ones who won the the New York Marathon and the and the London Marathon. And and Tadeusz told me one day, why don't you do something like breaking your you go for a long long time to do these breaks. So when and um, that's when I was doing the the marathon before I did Ocean Seven. And so when Rafa comes in and tells me he wants to do this. It made a lot of sense to me. And I said, well, have you done it with other swimmers? I said, no, but we'll see what happens with you. You know, it's like, a, you know, you're, you're, you're like a guinea pig. Let's see what happens with you. And we did it. And um, we learned a lot. I learned a lot. Um, we had our special soup. And, uh, and um, it helped a lot for, for the, the, the double of a Catalina. And um, that's why we want to do it again. And once we finish, we'll know that we are ready for for um, for all the English pirates that would try to put traps on us when we try to do the double crossing, oh, so we'll be, re we'll be ready for any anything. That's great. We we have a lot of um, experienced marathon and channel swimmers uh, here. Does anybody have a similar experience in you know swimming, resting, swimming, resting, swimming, resting? Um, you know we have. Uh, uh, we have uh, triple crown swimmers, channel swimmers. Uh, anybody want to comment or uh, question? Just unmute yourself and go ahead and uh, ask or make a comment. Come on, Susan, you're smiling. Don't be shy, Susan. I've never seen you shy, so go ahead. 
uh, not for for the distance you're going. Uh, that that would be uncharted waters, Antonio. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's why I, I'm so I'm so in awe about training for something like this because it's so out of the box because you're going to be in the water for a long time. So um, that's not in my repertoire at all. Um, and as far as resting, you know, I usually, I would go like a, you know, three or four hours in the morning and then come back and maybe do another three hours. But my distances, uh, you know, were, are 10 or 12 hour swims. And I, I think, how long are you, you ex I mean, you're expecting probably at least 20 hours, 24 hours? I promise I would never answer that, uh, that question. Oh, okay. I won't ask. Okay. I, I, you know, I learned, you know where I learned that in Molokai. Uh -huh. In Molokai, I went in thinking it was going to be 14 to 16 hours and it became 23. Right. So I, I want to be prepared to go as long as it takes to accomplish it. Right. Whatever time it takes. Because otherwise, if you know the ocean, I mean, you can have a bad day. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you know, my first English channel was 18 hours and 19 minutes. Oh. And 10 years later, I did 12 hours and 52 minutes. Okay. So, um, no, that I have no, no, no time in mind. Well, I think what, what is important is training, besides the physical part, is just training your brain and training your brain to go for that long and, and doing that four hour on, four hour off would be, you know, training your brain to stay up for that long. Yeah, that's, 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 a, good, that's a good point. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dan, do you have any experience um, with uh, all the hundreds of people that you've been involved with on channel swims or having that kind of training regimen where you, you go a period, rest a period, swim a amount? Yeah, actually, uh, I was going to chime in there too. Hi, Susan, by the way. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, I did the uh, island hopper swim, you know, Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, swimming, getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out through the, between those four islands on uh, the Santa Barbara uh, Cattle Family Channel Island chain. And uh, it is really more, it's much more difficult. It's very, it's an ad, definitely an added difficulty to get in and get out. Um, and for the training swim, mine certainly weren't as long as Antonio's are going to be. Uh, but, you know, I was in for four or five hours and then, uh, you know, out trying to warm up, um, trying to stay loose, uh, you know, obviously eat something and, and stay hydrated. Um, and, but it makes for a whole different type of swim to have to get in and get out, get in and get out. So I think for as a training swim, in Antonio's case, um, you know, it really does play on the mental, um, you know, as any long swim does, but plays more on the mental than the, than the physical after, uh, after it starts taking its toll and you're tired and having to get back in, especially after, you know, 10, 12, 15, 18 hours. Yeah. So very difficult. Yeah. But you remember, Dan, you remember you were, you were the kayaker for that uh, two years ago. Or your double Catalina. Yeah, well, for double Catalina, but that, remember that day we trained. Yes, yes, exactly. For the long yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, you the had, training swim, yes. Yeah, you had to, you, you, you did the workout with me. I mean, you, you were a kayak, you were not the work kayak. I know, we had to, you know, we had to take, go, go take naps and then get, yeah, you know, go get back in. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, but what I want to say, what, what I want to say, Stephen, is that yesterday, um, uh, Dan and I had our anniversaries. <laughs> Catalina Channel was first swam in on uh, January 15, 1927. Yeah. And Mr. Simonelli was the fourth person in the world, the third person in the world who swam it on the same day in in uh, 2015 or 16. 16. 16. Actually, I was actually the second person on the anniversary, but yes, the third person in January. Yeah, the third person in January. So when he does it, he calls me and says, well, I, I looked at it and said, God damn, this is really amazing. And um, with all due respect to our friends at the Catalini, Catalina Swimming Channel Association, said, how do you pull that up? I mean, they, 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 don't, they don't accept any reservations until April. So, well, <laughs> I talked to Forrest and I did this to Susan and that. 
So when I was training for the final laps of uh, Ocean 7, which was Cook in the North Channel, I thought doing Catalina in January would be my last workout. Uh, and uh, so I, 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 I just remember that. I called yeah. that. Just tell me how you did it. I mean, just tell me this whole scoop. What, ha- what do I have to do? So, well, you know, just call the uh, forest and write Susan and this and that. So I do everything behind the backs of Nora and Rafa. Nora and Rafa don't know that we're doing Catalina. ¿Te acuerdas, Rafa? No, que no sabías que iba a Rafa is gone. Well, totalmente, no, totalmente. No, no, no estaba de acuerdo. <laughs> so, Rafa wasn't, wasn't on, on board. Nora wasn't on board. But Dan and I were on board. So I said, we're going to go to the we're going to go and do Catalina on, on January. So if you look at my Instagram and look at the, the small video at the end of my swim, when I got out of, of my swim, you know, I, I looked at faces at Rafa and Nora and they are going, no way. I mean, what did this, what just happened? But I was, that gave me a lot of confidence that I was able to swim 14 hours at 14 degrees Catalina. Remember the waves then? It was, it was big. It was big. Uh, it was stormy. Oh wow! It was and uh, and uh, and we survived, but it was our it was our uh, um, anniversary yesterday uh, because it was on the 15th of January. So, salud. Yeah. Then uh, <laughs> I have no Corona, <laughs> but salud. Salud. salud yeah. I, I want to ask uh, two follow up questions. One of uh, Mr. Kennedy on ice swimming, and one of Georgina Quayle. Um, Georgina, can you describe to everybody what the champion of champions event is? Yeah, hi. Yeah, so um, I'm in the UK at the moment um, and this is my main like swim area around the UK. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I'm due to do it in the, I think there's one in June. So it's based at Dover, um, but it's called the champion of champions and they have one in um, England, one in Wales, I think one up in Scotland somewhere. So they have them at different locations, but the idea is that you do five miles, then three miles, then one mile. So there's a time limit. Um, They have a breaststroke event um, or a freestyle event and no wetsuits with the the British Long Distance Swimming Association um, like to do a bit more traditional. Um, But I think the I or the main idea is to obviously do it as quickly as possible, get enough rest and get it um, back in again because it's the quickest overall time. Um, but I think training wise this year, I, I did the channel one way within a relay team, but also did a 19 kilometer um, swim before that in a lake. And I found that um, kind of that getting back in and getting out is definitely is, it's like the mental training, not the physical. I think physically it is okay. Um, I do a lot of pool training and lakes, but definitely from a mental side, it's how to prepare. So it'd be quite interesting to to hear some of the in and out pieces just for that five, three, one, but definitely if um, traveling allows it, I'd recommend if any of you are in the UK to give them a go, because I think they look brilliant. On, on the, in between the five mile, the three mile and the one mile, is there any specific minimum amount of time you have to get out of the water? No, so they did say that you can do it continuously. So I think a lot of the breaststrokers do end up doing it as more of a continuous um, event. So there is no minimum. Got it. Got it. And uh, the reason I wanted to talk to uh, Mr. Kennedy is he does massively long, extreme ice miles and, and such. <laughs> but yeah. do you, do you more local? than me. Yeah. Yeah. Do more <laughs> than me. <laughs> you, you know, do you, when you're training in the ice, do you get in for, let's say, five minutes, get out, get in for five minutes? Do you do something no. similar? <laughs> Um, I, when I, when I do some uh, for extreme long distance, which would be two kilometer plus, um, we do 10 kilometer swims in about eight degrees Celsius, oh. Oh. Wow. uh, which are pretty, pretty, pretty brutal. Um, I think if you can complete them now, is sometimes the multi tidal assisted, which is, it still takes us about two hours, 45 and, um, they're particularly brutal if you if you really want to get to the more extreme body uh, adaption, you know, and to be able to absorb a much lower temperature but a smaller distance, you know. Oh wow! So uh, and I actually just Antonio there. I found 
I've done a few of the 24 hour swims, you know, the mile per hour, um, especially in Guilford Lido, uh, which was a fabulous event run by um, Leslie. I think the, the lady would know from the BLDSA there. And um, that was fantastic. And it's, it's tough, even the, the pool is 20 degrees Celsius, but the endurance of every mile, getting in every mile is particularly hard as well, mentally. And uh, it will test your will. Do you want to really do this nonstop, you know? What time of the day do you start the 24 hours from? Uh, it's usually 8 to 8. Okay. 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. And, and again, uh, here, is it's, this it's a concept. A yeah. It, 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 it's in an outdoor pool. Outdoor pool. 50 meters or 25? Uh, a 20, uh, a 50. It's a 10 lane 50 meter pool. Uh, it's been a successful event. I think it's been running. Unfortunately, it's stopped now, but it's been running for, I think, eight years. Wow. Uh, and I highly recommend it to anybody. And unfortunately, uh, I think it's just run as course, the lady that ran it, Leslie, for charity, and she's raised so much money. Uh, it's a premier event, and I think it's a hidden gem uh, over this in Europe, you know, because uh, you don't have that. Uh, how many, many people play? How, how, uh, how many people They rotate every half an hour or so. Each, say, there's 10 lanes. And you're looking at uh, eight per lane. So that's 16 per lane over the hour. So you rotate every 30 minutes. Even if you're slow, you still have to move out of the way. And it just works, you know. So you're looking at, um, so that's what, 10 by, 10 by 16, 160 swimmers. Okay. Um, so this is a relay or is it an individual event? Individual. No, individual. Uh, there is relay options there, um, but it's more individual. It, it used to be on in April, and uh, I reached out to Leslie this year, and she, she just kind of, she said she, she's handed it over to somebody else uh, after a long period. So um, it, it's, a, it's a big loss because it's, I think it's, I, I was kind of looking at doing something like yourself, maybe a double English channel back then, and um I was looking for that kind of 24 hour kind of endurance stuff, you know, to get the mind ready. Well, um, so from 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. the next day, what were yeah. the toughest hours of that 24 hour period? Uh, you're looking at uh, probably the 12 o'clock, the midnight. Okay. Uh, after that, I mean, it's outdoor. It's, it's, it's rough and ready as in, you know, you would have um, tents, that kind of thing, you know. It's not, it's not very luxurious. It's, it's tough. That means your togs won't dry anymore. Uh, there's no sunlight. So, you know, little things like that, regard to the weaknesses start to come into your, your own setup, whether you've got your food ready, you've got proper gear. And I think the, as Ned Dennison says, the witches come at about 3 a.m. when you really question, you know, because it's the getting in, getting out. It's so hard. I can't, I can't underestimate it. It's, it's, and then the guy rings the, the five minute warning. He calls a five minute warning kind of bell. He shakes, and that five minute warning it, it sends shivers down you because you have to get back in. Uh, uh, even though it's the air temperature could be say three or four degrees, but the water temperature is eighteen and or eighteen to twenty. And, and that's that water gets very cold after that period of time, as I'm sure Antonio would know from distance. People say, you know, the extreme water I swim in, but then you have, um, you know, 16 degrees water will get really cold after 14 hours. The body starts to suffer, you know. Well, thank you very much. I just think you gave um, Antonio's yeah. coach Rafa some good ideas. Yeah, thank you, Gear. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> That was nice to hear to give Rafa more crazy ideas. <laughs> I, I, Rafa, I, call, here, call, I, call me Rafa. I have more of them if you want them for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a question. I have a question. Um, I have a friend who is doing uh, cold water swimming. Um, and, uh, you know, for the first time. And um, she gets dizzy um, mm. when she's swimming. And um, what, 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 would you, you know, what would you recommend? I mean, 
Yeah, how, we got this. Can yeah. Can you go over how you acclimatate yourself for cold water swimming? Uh, well, just the dizziness is quite popular now that we have a, a massive amount of new people here in Ireland doing winter swimming for the first time. Um, it, it generally, um, I, I highly recommend earplugs because the cold water sloshing in around the ears and the ear canals and can make that kind of dizziness feeling. Um, I, we, I do recommend neoprene caps for your first year because it protects your ears with the either with the chin strap or just lower than your ears because it stops that imbalance. Uh, with, when you're in the water, sometimes you actually start to get discoordinated. And then when you're out of water, you don't start falling around and, and hurting yourself. So um, I definitely recommend those basic things. And um, the climatizing period, we, we have a little competition going here and it's been quite successful. It's... Um, it's part of a group of a walrus train. We call it walruses. It's a group of, uh, I got this concept from Russia. And uh, basically we have 260 novice swimmers that uh, virtually are bringing them along into uh, winter swimming properly, winter swimming safety and into a nice kilometer roll um, over the period of five months. We've got another two months to go. And uh, just tips and stuff and mistakes we've learned for cold water adaption which is it's pretty cold here at the minute, uh, but not in the ice environment, which is, I, I'd rather not go there with them. But the cold water adaption, I think everybody's learning and making mistakes and they're honing their kit and their skills and swimming with people in groups. And it, it, it's really taken off here. Uh, it's really nice to see. Uh, thanks. I will pass that on. So, uh, the temperature, what, what temperature do you think your channel would be, Antonio? What, what, when is your slot, by the way? It's uh, between July 31st and uh, August uh, 16th. August 16th, yeah. August, 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 uh, August 7th. I think it's going to be between 16 and 17. Yeah, yeah. Balmy water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, when, when, when you, when you, when you yeah. Believe me, I mean, when you swim and, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, when, when, I'm, stop, I, I'm I, I, don't swim, I don't swim like, I, I'm not like you or Quinn who's swimming uh, in a very, very cold water. But, uh, you know, once you go, once you go, not for me, once you go over 16, it's, um, it's something that you can handle. You know, I would love it to be 17. You know, yesterday, I, 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 I don't know if you guys, well, some of the, 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 the ones that are here read it. But last year, we have the seventh year of the warmest year in the world, wow. seven straight wow. years, we have more and more warm uh, weather. And um, even if Trump says that that's fake news, that's happening. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and, uh, and yeah. I don't know what's going to happen uh, uh, in uh, in the channel. I mean, but I think that's 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 what I'm expecting. When we did Catalina in uh, in uh, uh, in two in in two eight in two nineteen. How was it, uh, 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 Dan? It was about 21 or 22 degrees. I mean, there was, uh, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, for, for your, for your two-way or for January? No, for the two-way. Um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah, I think it was 70 plus. So, yeah. So it was, yeah. What is that, 22? Yeah, somewhere around there. Lovely, lovely water. Very Yeah, nice. it's been. It's definitely been warmer, uh, you know, all the seasons. It's starting to re revert this year a little bit, so maybe I don't know. I, I, so I think you're right about English Channel. I think that'll probably be about the uh, about the average temperature for you. Maybe a little warmer on France side. Yeah, um, uh, Garrett. The Susan had a question about um, how does your uh, how does your skin handle all of the chlorine water over a 24 hour period? Do you put cream on? Do you uh, put sunscreen on. Is there any tricks, uh, you know, to get in and out and in and out of a chlorinated pool? Is that to me, Stephen? Is it? Yes, it's to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah, I've actually done both. I've done twenty-four hours in this uh, in the pool. Sorry, I'll start again. I've done twenty-four hours in an indoor pool, twenty-four hours in an outdoor pool, and then uh, twenty-four hours in the sea. 
Um, and the, I found the hardest one I, I suffered quite badly was in the pool, the chlorinated pool mm. uh, afterwards. That was the same process. Well, uh, yeah, it was a mile per hour in the pool and my, my nose, my sinuses nearly exploded after that. Okay. Um, it was very warm. Uh, we drank everything, tons of water, we had everything. Uh, the outdoor pool I found a, a dream um, because you're hitting the cold air and you're getting a good clean air and the air was ranging from I think 16 to 4 degrees through the night uh, that was that was fantastic uh, I, I, that's why I'd highly recommend that not the indoor pool the indoor pool you, you could probably either injure yourself or you know f- lose a week's training after the session yeah uh, even though you've done whatever distance um, and I've done a few 12 hours um kind of non-stop you know i'd say you swim for an hour and you just have a you have a bag of food at the end of the lane but again mostly outdoor you know so the you, indoor stuff i wouldn't recommend you know yeah are you a merman the equivalent of the male <laughs> version of mermaid <laughs> <laughs> yeah something like that yeah gills here like uh okay patrick patrick duffy you know you remember him man yeah. from atlantis we all remember him you know yeah. Pierre, um, Pierre, you know, you know yeah. the nice thing is when we finish this conversation, I'm going to go to Lucia and say, look, I found this guy who does more than me. So you have to be happy that I'm not like there. <laughs> so I won't turn to there. So, you know, there's always yeah. someone who does more than you. So, I, you know, that, that, was, that thank you very much. You give me a good example to tell my wife that I'm not the craziest guy on earth. <laughs> No, no, you're you're sound perfectly normal to me. It's the rest of the people who are crazy, you know. <laughs> but I, 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 I tell you, ahead. sorry, Stephen. No, go ahead, go ahead. I found. Uh, I think you've done an article actually on me, Stephen. Uh, we've done a twelve-hour swim uh, through the night, and it was absolutely horrendous. Uh, fog, rain, sleet, <laughs> everything came out of seals attacking us. Uh, and Jill Lyons, Mains, you know, everything came at us. And how I didn't give up swimming after that, I'll never know. Uh, I, I, we had kayaks with torches on their head to see the, the Lyons, Mains. We could actually get back to where we started. Because they when we when we started, they surrounded where we got in. And we had to go up to another location. And there's a picture actually there of me. I think it was a, f- a lovely picture of a guy holding an old school gas lantern. It was like trying to like a sailor lantern, you know, it was really cool. And uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend that one. Okay, so we've we all know what a, a jellyfish sting is like. We all know what uh, or we all fear uh, an encounter with a shark. Now, Gary, you just mentioned being attacked by seals. Like, how do they attack you? Like, do they come out with your teeth? Do they they hit you with their fin? What do they just bump you? Um, Am I still in the show here, Antonio? I hope I'm not. Oh. Am I? It's great to see you guys. You no, know? no, 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 no. This is, that's, yeah. this is everybody's show. No, no, no. Yeah, Please. yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I'm, enjoy, okay, I'm, enjoy, I'm, enjoy, I'm enjoying it. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the seal encounters, um, we've, we've two types of gray, a gray seal, and uh, which is a very large one, and a, a harbor seal. And generally, they're, they're quite inquisitive. Um, but during, um, I'd say during sort of breeding times, they would tend to defend the young. Okay. So they would give you, they'd bump you. Uh, they would actually, I would say, uh, we've had some swimmers that are, they would actually m- not bite your foot. They would actually, they would under try to follow your feet, but they would nip at it to see what it is. <laughs> so they would actually, and I've had a few swimmers swimming with me and I heard the screams behind me. They're, in, you know, even though, and they have to get a tetanus shot and various things, but uh, it's uh, it's quite frightening and they're quite very intimidating. It doesn't even matter the small ones. They're, they're, you know, some of them could be 200 kilos, you know. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, they're quite intimidating. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I call them sea dogs because I'm trying to, you know, not be afraid of them. I was afraid of them a few years ago. Uh, so... I call them sea dogs and I, I just kind of wave at them and, you know, stupid things. But in my head, they're like a pet dog, you know, a sea dog. And I'm in their land and, and uh, generally that, uh, that kind of relieves it. But a lot of, pe- a lot of people are scared of them. And I, I think the fear factor of 
uh, not understanding them, I think. And I went off to Seal Rescue Ireland to go and actually meet them. You know, young pups show me their fins, why they have little barbs on their fins, why there were scrapes on people's legs because the, the seal was just inquisitive and it might have scraped their leg and somebody says, oh, I was bitten. And I said, well, you weren't bitten, you were scraped because the seal was trying to understand what you are in his land, you know, in his environment, you know. So it's the, um, the only ones I've feared of, Stephen, is the, um, is the leopard seal in Antarctica. Okay. That's the only okay. one. Yeah. Yeah. Now those, those yeah. hide under the ice, correct? Yeah. Or yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, they do. They hunt penguins, uh, penguins. And when you see them up close, you realize that they're about four meters long. Uh, solid muscle. It reminds me of actually, I call them a raptor, you know, like a dinosaur raptor is that kind of, it's very smart, very, uh, you know, very sleek and, and it can just do anything it wants to. And uh, we had one encounter with those and uh, we, we had to move location very quickly. So that was pretty spooky, you know. So is that why when uh, you're in Antarctica and you're going to do all these swims, do you throw something on in the water first before you get in just so that could be like a little bait <laughs> you mean bait <laughs> a bait <laughs> yeah 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 we, yeah we club a few fur seals and we throw them in then you know oh wow <laughs> no, we don't yeah, yeah, yeah. no 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 we send in the we send in the, the the women and children first and then the men get in afterwards you know <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because the I mean, sorry I'm sorry happy. lady I, I, I'm happy Jimena didn't hear that but let me one thing you know I got two things from you today I can tell um, that uh, somebody was crazy than me but my, my family always complains <laughs> and my friend but I always take up the microphone and I don't leave it and uh, you know so I can say that there was somebody who spoke more than me so that, that makes me that's a good, that's a good feeling <laughs> a good word well, it's nice to see people and speak to people instead of just, you know, masking up and you can barely see, notice who they are. I'm afraid COVID is pretty bad here at the minute. So um, a lot of people are suffering here. So we're just, yeah, it's, it was an opportunity to jump online with you guys, which is great, you know. Yeah. I, I want to ask uh, Brian. Brian Finlay was uh, inducted in the National Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame and he has been involved in swimming for many decades. Um, Brian, when you hear about the things that Antonio is doing and, and uh, Garrett is doing, you know the people that, that, you, that you swam with and, and even came before you. Are these people crazier than in the past or just the same version of all the crazy <laughs> swimmers in, from the long past? Well, <clears throat> And I remember Jerry Forsberg um, commenting one time, people were talking about the pollution in the Lake District and in other lakes and rivers and things. And um, Jerry poo-pooed it. Um, but uh, certainly these days, uh, and it doesn't matter whether it's in England, um, Scotland, Wales, or, or the, on Lake Erie with green algae. And I have no desire to challenge that kind of water. I don't see the point in it, um, but maybe that's my, my particular upbringing. <laughs> so I, I must admit, I haven't really challenged the critters. The lamprey were a particular challenge uh, on Lake Ontario swims in the past. And um, I think Marilyn Bell can tell some stories about that. Uh, she, she always talks about uh, uh, how timid she was about getting in the water. But a lot of it was to do with the stories of, say, the lamprey. And uh, they would attach themselves to the body. But the, the problem seemed to have come on the people that got injured. They, they would pull the thing off. And this is after several hours in cold water. And then try to throw it away. And that's when they would injure their shoulder. Oh, um, or yeah. something like that that could uh, lead to them finishing. So, um, I, you know, people swung down rivers and uh, in polluted rivers and uh, having to live on antibiotics then for a week or two afterwards. Um, you know, there are plenty of stories there uh, of people that, that have encountered these issues in the past. I, I was going to make 
one comment, and that was on about the, the, the repeated training swims. And I think it, it was interesting because I remembered, and I still see comments being posted, and um, even in your interviews, uh, people talk about the 24-hour Latouk swims. Yes. With the, the two swimmer, 24-hour yeah. swims. And some of them found that particularly challenging, having to get back in every hour right through the night. And some of them wimped out of it and forced their partner to go on for two hours before they pop, popped in again. But um, to get out and get back in again it can be a real challenge. And I think this is the same sort of challenge to the body as when you've been in the water for a really long time and you start swimming into colder water. The body has become acclimatized to whatever temperature you're in. But when you start going down into that colder water, it has a real trouble trying to adapt. So some of those, the professional races that everybody gave up on, on Lake Ontario, um, international challenges, and then they went on to uh, Chicago and uh, Lake Michigan and completed that, those swims 24 hours. Um, just a week later, but to swim into colder water, the body um, sort of adapts to these situations and, and has, seems to have a trouble coming back again. So I don't know, those were just a few of my thoughts that were going through in my head as we were going through the different topics. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Brian. Well, uh, Antonio, you didn't, oh, when, uh, Brian, can you explain what a lamprey is? Like, how long is it? Do, do they have teeth when they stick on your shoulder? What, what does it feel like? Um, they've got a flat head that has some teeth within it. And it's a tail, it's, a, it's an eel, okay. effectively. And so they can come in different sorts of lengths. But it, it's that sort of flat, flattish head with the teeth below it that will then latch into the skin and then try to draw blood. Wow. What, what, other than tearing it off, how do you get them off? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether they're like leeches, whether you can get them off with salt or whatever. Oh. You know, leeches were another problem for, for swimmers. I yeah. certainly, I certainly uh, shied away from a number of Scottish blocks when, I, when we lived in Scotland because I, I could see the, the leeches around the side, the water edge. Okay. okay. Wow. Susan Heim <laughs> asked, does it hurt? The leeches she knows about, but the lamprey, does it, do they, does it hurt any when they're on you? Um, I can't speak from knowledge at all. Okay. No, I, I imagine it leaves a mark for a while afterwards, but then again, those of us have been yeah. uh, hit by uh, stingers of various kinds although I've never encountered a, a box jelly or anything like that, um, will know that uh, in, the pain can be there for her. You don't notice it so much when you're in the water, but uh, when you get out, and it, well, you, you notice it when it hits you, but uh, it, it can be far worse afterwards, and it's the week afterwards while everything's sort of recovering. My experience, that is, with jellies. Yeah, thank you. Well, Antonio, you don't have any uh, eels or lamprey or uh, leeches in Acapulco, do you? No, 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 no. Only spotting the corona by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you know, <laughs> we're on vacation at a beautiful spot. No, I just show it to, to the, uh, all of my friends. There's uh, the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. Oh, lovely. And um, no, we're just here um, relaxing, eating properly, drinking more properly, and, uh, and training uh, as Rafa would like me to train. Great. So, uh, so it's going to be a week here, we're doing four hours, then we're going back to Mexico for some cold training on Friday and Saturday. And, um, and then the next week, I'll have a surprise. All right. We're going back to Las Estacas to, to see what, what, where we left the last time. Great, great. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for participating and uh, adding your experiences and observations. And we'll, we'll be back next week, same time with Diary of a Double with Antonio Aguilas. Thank you. Adios. Ciao, guys. Ciao, guys.